this book, uh, what our schools are, uh, are forbidding our children to teach our children. And I hope you're gleaning some uh, good information from this. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, 16th American president, said this, The philosophy of the second uh, of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. That's profound. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, to, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures, that's the Bible and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. I am profitably engaged in reading the Bible. Take all of this book upon reason that you can, and the balance by faith, and you will live and die a better man. But for this book we could not know right from wrong. I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. The Bible is suited to men in all conditions of life and includes all the duties they owe to their Creator to themselves, and to their fellow man. I know that liberty is right, for Christ teaches it, and Christ is God. Who, who, who did I just quote? Abraham Lincoln. Would you hear that on the news today? How about Obama quoting those verses? Isn't that an amazing thing? Let's, let's continue. George Washington, amen? Uh, Carver, you know, one of those, um, well, you need to look up his name and see, see what he is. He's an American agriculture chemist, and he was born a slave. Can you imagine that? A slave. The secret of my success, someone asked. It is simple. It is found in the Bible. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Imagine that, black man. God give all that wisdom to. Well, that's who we need running for president. You want a black man? Get somebody with character. Amen. How about Douglas MacArthur? Five-star American general. Amen. Never a night goes by, be I ever so tired, but I read the Word of God before I go to bed. Wow. Uh, Ale Alexander uh, Solzhenitsyn, 1918. He's a Soviet novelist, U.S. citizen, Nobel, Lariat. If I were called upon to identify the principal trait of the entire 20th century, I would be unable to find anything more precise and pithy than to repeat once again, men have forgotten God. Imagine that. Helen Keller, remember her? If you don't, you need to read these things. Get out of the TV. American deaf and blind lecturer. This is what she says. Unless we form the habit of going to the Bible in bright moments as well as in trouble, we cannot fully respond to its consolations because we lack equilibrium between light and darkness. Truly the Bible, the teaching of our Savior, is the only way out of the dark. Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister. Must everything in our age be uh, pre-digested? Does the Bible have to be reduced to pablum? I refuse to believe that modern man who split the atom and is exploring space is unable to cope with the grandeur and glory of the King James Version. Imagine that! Winston Churchill said that. He also said, We reject with scorn all those learned and labored myths that Moses was but a legendary figure. We believe that the most scientific view, the most up-to-date and uh, rationalistic conception, will find its fullest satisfaction in taking the Bible story literally. We may be sure that all these things happen just as they are set out according to Holy Writ, that's the Bible. We may believe that they happen to people not so very different from ourselves and that the impressions those people receive were faithfully recorded and have been transmitted across the centuries with far more accuracy than many of the telegraphed accounts we read going on today. That was Winston. Ed J. Edgar Hoover, FBI Director. 
Inspiration has been the keynote of America's phenomenal growth. Inspiration has been the backbone of America's greatness. Inspiration has been the difference between defeat and victory in America's wars. And this inspiration has come from the faith in God and faith in the belief that the Holy Bible is the inspired Word of God. J. Edgar Hoover. Charles Darwin. Listen to this one. English naturalist. Amen. The following is a conversation with Lady Hope of Northfield, England in the closing days of Darwin's life. Darwin says, I want you very much to speak here. I know you read the Bible in the villages. Hope answers, What shall I speak about? Darwin. Christ Jesus and his salvation. Is not that the best thing? Darwin said that. Darwin also said, I was a young man with uninformed ideas. I threw out queries, suggestions, wondering all the time about everything. To my astonishment, the ideas took like wildfire. People made a religion of them. Who said that? Darwin. Look it up, people. Goodness gracious. Harvard University. Rules and Precepts, 1646. Everyone shall consider the main end of his life and studies to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life. Seeing the Lord gives wisdom, everyone shall seriously, by prayer and secret, seek wisdom of him. Everyone shall so exercise himself in reading the scriptures twice a day that they may be ready to give an account of their proficiency therein. That was Harvard. How about that? Imagine that. Educational institution. Victor Hugo, French writer, national hero. England has two books, the Bible and Shakespeare. England made Shakespeare, but the Bible made England. Imagine these things. Robbing our kids of the book, of that Bible. Greatest minds in the world knew the Bible. Knew the Bible. Knew the importance. It's the monarch of books. Winston Churchill getting down on all the perversions like we do. Way back then, imagine that. King James Bible, the monarch of books, the inspired word of God. Also, George uh, uh, Grigor Mundo, uh, Austrian, father of genetics, believed the Bible. Jerome, back in 347 to 419, church scholar. To ignore the scriptures is to ignore Christ. To be ignorant of the scriptures is not to know Christ. A man who is well grounded in the testimonies of the scripture is the bulwark of the church. If there is anything in this life which sustains a wise man and induces him to maintain his serenity amidst tribulation and adversaries of the world, it is in the first place I consider uh, the meditation and knowledge of the scriptures. Um, Augustine, Bishop of uh, Hypo, let us give in and yield our assent to the authority of Holy Scripture, that's the Bible, which knows not how either to be deceived or to deceive. Faith will totter if the authority of the sacred scriptures waver. Lord, you would certainly not have bestowed such eminent authority on those scriptures throughout the world unless it had been your will that by them men should believe in you and in them seek you. That's what got Luther and that's what got all these other reformers to leave the Catholic churches because they just read the, the, the fathers and they went back and found out that they, they figured that the scriptures were the sole authority, not some re religious institution. Those scriptures are important. That's, what, that's how this land was founded. That's what secured us. That's what gave us confidence. That's what got God's blessing on our land. And your kids are being robbed of that. Robbed of that. Daniel Webster. The Bible is our only safe guide. The Bible fits man for life and prepares him for death. Many, many, many more quotes in this little booklet. All from great people, great minds, scientific minds, believed in God knew that he was big enough and powerful enough to give us his word in written form, preserved, perfect, inspired in that King James Bible. Your kids are being robbed in the public school. If they're going to the public school, please, please compliment that education. Give them an overbalance of scripture so that their minds will be wise. They won't take in all these lies that are being perpetrated by these, the, the educational institution, these fables. We need a strong generation, patriotic generation, one that believes in God and knows that he's holy. Thank you.